driver on the ground in the war zone, how he's pulling off the difficult rescue missions that no one else is willing to attempt. Stay with us. Okay, we're back now with the latest on the war in Ukraine, where today in the city of Kyiv, residents woke up to air raid sirens and blasts after a drone attack in the nation's capital. The roof of a building, you see it there, completely destroyed. Officials say air defenses help prevent severe damage. In the eastern part of Ukraine, the incredible story tonight of a former UPS driver now inside the war zone, rushing into war-torn regions. At times, the only person willing to rush in and help pull off incredibly dangerous rescues. Ellison Barber is in Ukraine tonight with this story. Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine. The latest front in Russia's relentless war. 71,000 people used to live here. Now, this is a no man's land. And it's where one American is carrying out his own operation to help Ukrainians. That's the building we were just in. He's documenting scenes like these on social media, where he's known as Bakhmut Brad. Yeah. yeah? Whoa, let me see. A lone wolf of sorts. Hello? Taking rescue calls when others can't or won't. The two primary uh, jobs are delivering aid and then evacuating people out. He'll tell you he's just Brad from the States, a guy who's had a lot of jobs, some with emergency medical training. But most recently, he was a UPS truck driver in Maine. Now he's driving routes few would dare to take. <laughs> Under bombardment at times. And alone. I'm sort of the last mile guy in a lot of different places. Roughly speaking, do you have a sense of how many evacuations you've done since you've been here? Dozens and dozens and dozens. Uh, sh surely more than 100. It, I, I'm bad at counting. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All of these videos are Brad's. Probably went up and over that guy. Snapshots of a humanitarian mission few back home could imagine. I've just gotten a call about a wounded person next door to an evacuation that happened recently. This Hello? was Brad's Thanksgiving. Hello? <laughs> At nightfall, a call came from Eastern Bakhmut. He was about to begin one of his most daring rescues. Hello. 69-year-old oh. oh. Tatiana Letterkova was desperately trying to save her husband, Valentin, who was injured in an explosion. Oh. She tried to stop the bleeding with tourniquets we and to, kitchen we rats. We, doctor, we have to go to a doctor now. Brad tried carrying Valentin right. on his back, but couldn't do it alone. Oh. Oh. Boy, boy. So he pulled him down every step to the temporary safety of his Toyota Land Cruiser. Boy. Finally, after a harrowing drive, they made it to a hospital. There was little time to spare. Today, Tatiana is in Western Ukraine. The memories of that night still haunt her, except for one. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a voice on the street. Hey, 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 a yell. Her husband of 48 years is alive. And she says it's only because of Brad. He is an unreal human, unreal. He is just an angel. I'm serious. It is impossible for a person. It is impossible for an ordinary person. I just thought that an angel had come. Brad is still in eastern Ukraine. Did you expect to be here as long as you no. have been? <laughs> no, no I, I did not. Um, no, I thought I probably would have already been, been back by now. And he says he's not going anywhere. There are a lot of people who come in and go back out. Yeah, I feel on the hook. 
I mean, I just, I just, I, I keep looking at the need. I keep looking at the grief. I keep looking at the freezing cold and the emaciated animals and the medical injuries and on and on and on. His reason for staying is simple. Keeping his operation going is not. He runs off of donations and a belief encapsulated in the words of a Ukrainian poet, Ilya Kaminsky. And when they bombed other people's houses, we protested, but not enough. We opposed them, but not enough. In the country of money, our great country of money, we forgive us, live happily during the war. Those words, he says, are a call to action. Each delivery, each rescue, his protest against Russia's war. Ellison Barber joins us tonight from Kyiv. Ellison, this story and that footage, is, it's pretty incredible. How do people reach Brad? I mean, I know there's not like a 911 system and, and he's an American. How are they able to contact him to, to ask him for help? Yeah, I mean, it's a little complex. He works with uh, different U.S.-based humanitarian groups. We actually first got in touch with him by speaking with a U.S.-based humanitarian group called Assist Ukraine. Um, but at other times, you know, he is really just getting these calls by word of mouth. That specific rescue you saw in the piece on Thanksgiving Day, that was a perfect example. The woman who he rescued, she told us that she had picked up her phone, tried to call a bunch of different numbers to get help. Either the calls weren't going through because the cell service was down uh, or just no one was picking up. Ultimately, she said she ended up texting with the daughter of the mayor of Bakhmut and the daughter somehow had Brad's number, gave it to her through WhatsApp, and then she reached out to Brad and sent him a text, gave him a call saying, I need help, and he came. So a lot of times he is just getting these calls out of the blue because he's been here for so long that people just know who he is. I mean, at times he's traveling into Bakhmut solely to make donations. He's picking up things that have been sent from the United States and then delivering them on the ground, getting in, getting out very quickly. But every time he does that, he's taking a risk. This city, Bakhmut, it is the site of some of the fiercest battles right now. Just four days ago, President Zelensky described this city as burnt ruins. The population there, it used to be 71,000. Now the regional mayor says it is less than 12,000. Tom. And Ellison, do, do we know how long he plans on staying there? And, and, and does he have the means to keep helping people throughout this war? I mean, look, he's always trying to raise money, raise donations. When we sat down with him, he needed money to replace the tires on the front of his car. He sort of takes this day by day, but he told us he really feels compelled to do this. And he didn't think he would stay as long as he has, but he feels like he can't go home. And for now, Tom, he has no clear end date. Ellison Barber and her team, we thank you for that incredible report tonight. When we come back, the state of emergency declared in Peru, violent protests erupting in the streets, why police and how they're now cracking down.